plus. We're trying to make a living. We're out there doing our job. We're getting hurt. Why many local hospitals are falling short when it comes to keeping their staff safe. From the WGBH News Studios, this is Greater Boston. Nurses are the backbone of every hospital, but the work is also back-breaking, sometimes literally. Healthcare workers suffer the highest rate of back, neck, and shoulder injuries of any profession, including construction workers. Why that's happening is the subject of an extensive multi-part series by NPR's investigations unit called Injured Nurses. In partnership with NPR, WGBH News reporter Stephanie Lydon takes a look at how healthcare professionals here in Massachusetts are doing. Come on. Come on, take a little walk. Two-year-old Hunter is in good hands. His grandmother not only adores him, but is well qualified to care for any bumps and bruises along the way. Chris Weir spent a lifetime working as a nurse and like so many of her colleagues, paid a price. You can see it in the way she walks, a limp in her left leg. It's subtle, but the pain is nearly constant. The only way I describe it, and people think I'm crazy, it's a toothache in my leg. That's what it feels like. Her leg pain comes from back injuries. She herniated the same disc twice, doing what all nurses do, taking care of patients. The first injury, it wasn't just um, a one, and it was, I did something. You know, it was just a cumulative effect. She had surgery, went back to work three months later, and was lifting a patient's leg. And then it went I don't know, pot, boom, I don't know what happened. And I just said, oh my God, I did it again. Come on, climb up. For Chris, that second injury was the end. Lifting patients, an essential part of her job, was no longer possible. Chris is one of thousands of Massachusetts hospital workers injured on the job each year. Back, shoulder, and other musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs, are more common among hospital workers than in any other industry. In 2013, MSDs kept nearly 3,000 Massachusetts hospital workers off the job. In Massachusetts, uh, hospital workers are the single largest group of people with workplace injuries and illnesses every year. Laura Panetta, a professor in the Department of Work Environment at UMass Lowell, says many of those injuries can be prevented. There are a number of studies showing how effective good patient handling programs can be in hospitals. Okay, so we're going to use this sheet underneath you. Case in point, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, where most rooms are equipped with a patient lift. The machine not the nurse lifts the patient. Kendra Conlon says moving patients used to require at least two people. We would create a sheet and sort of almost like a sling type blanket and it would sort of be like a one, two, three up into the chair. She says patients were often anxious, but supported by the lift, Lester Macklin says he feels secure. You're fully embodied in it and it's slow, it's nothing rushed. Over the past five years, Beth Israel Deacon has spent $2 million on lift technology. Jackie Cakley's job is to make sure staff use it. The payoff, patient handling injuries are down 40%. That means being able to go home and not have back pain or shoulder pain or neck pain. Yet a statewide survey indicates two-thirds of hospitals have no lifts in intensive care units and a third don't even have protocols for safe patient handling. We have data about how long the program's been in place. Laura Panette served on a task force that sought to address that deficit with a series of recommendations. They were transmitted to the Office of the Commissioner of Public Health. And when did that happen? in August of 2013. More than a year later, the recommendations remained shelved at the Department of Public Health, much to Panette's frustration. Could these recommendations make a difference in those numbers, in those individual lives? I think we could be very substantially reducing that rate of injury. Panette says DPH insiders told her the Massachusetts Hospital Association raised a red flag about the recommendations. There was some concern about uh, the economic impact on hospitals of implementing some of the recommendations. The Massachusetts Hospital Association did not respond directly to our questions, but instead issued a statement saying, patient and employee safety is a top priority of all Massachusetts hospitals. DPH refused comment, but after our calls, the recommendations for safe patient handling were finally published. 
But the delay in releasing recommendations that could prevent other nurses from being injured outrages Chris Weir. We're trying to make a living. We're out there doing our job. We're getting hurt. And if there's ways that they can reduce the number of injuries, why is it taking so long? Chris Weir, by the way, did find work again. She's working as a visiting nurse, doesn't have to do that patient lifting anymore, but she told me even driving to different appointments is difficult. Sometimes she has to stop, get out, and stretch because of that constant pain. So you did this piece in conjunction with the big national NPR series. How does the status quo in Massachusetts compare with other states? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, hospital workers in Massachusetts are twice as likely to have one of these back, neck, um, or shoulder injuries than anywhere else in the country. What's not clear is why that's happening. It may be that the rate of injury is higher here. It may also be that hospitals are better about reporting those injuries. All right, Stephanie Lydon, thank you. You're welcome. So why has legislation addressing the epidemic of injured nurses languished on Beacon Hill? Here to help address that is State Senator Harriet Chandler, who is sponsoring a bill that would require safe patient handling techniques in state hospitals. Welcome, Senator Chandler. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Explain to me in detail what your bill would require. My bill basically looks at what the problem is. It tries to analyze the problem. It identifies safe patient handling equipment. That's the expensive part of the bill. It sets up committees, a committee to look at and to advise a hospital or a nursing home uh, what they should do. And it basically sets up procedures for healthcare workers. We're obviously spending a lot of money at this point in time with, for people who are not able to work because of, of, of injuries. 12% uh, of, of nurses or nurses' aides in hospitals have these kinds of problems. 17% in nursing homes have these kinds of problems. That's pretty high. Now, as I understand it, legislation akin to your bill has been around for a decade or so and has never actually become law. Why is that? I can't say, other than to tell you that I filed this bill in the last session and it really didn't go very far. I assume that the hospitals are not too keen on the, on the legislation. It's, there's a cost attached to it. We actually have some comment that the Mass Hospital Association made, I think back in 2013, when similar legislation was being considered. I think we can show viewers the provisions are impractical in nature, the MHA said, as they require a one-size-fits-all approach that does not take into account different hospital types and sizes. What do you say to that? I would say that's really not true because it sets up a committee in every hospital or every nursing home to look at that specific hospital or nursing home's problems and to come to grips with it. What kind of equipment, what kind of problems they have, what kind of equipment is needed. There should be no manual transfer of patients at this point. So your bill, you would say, is not a one-size-fits-all? I would say it solution. isn't. Uh, you mentioned cost a moment ago. How much does one of those things that we saw the patient being transported cost? I can't give you a cost, real right? answer to that, uh, but clearly uh, it's a cost. You either pay now or you pay later. If we don't have the equipment, certainly there are going to be people who are going to be injured as a result of it, and that's going to cost money. You're talking about uh, requirements involving equipment and also new protocols. Is there any doubt that uh, the, the uh, changes that you're talking about are effective, that they would reduce injury? I believe in other, in other states we have already seen it, and you, in, your, in your own uh, cut that you showed of Beth Israel Hospital, you showed exactly how it has improved the situation there. All right, Senator Harriet Chandler, thank you. You can find much more from NPR series Injured Nurses on 89.7 WGBH Radio as well as online at WGBHnews.org.